So welcome to another new chapter and what we will learn is what are capacitors, what is capacitance, understand how capacitors work in series and parallel, solve a few problems and finally close with what are dielectrics. But all this can be too much in a single lesson. So in this lesson, let us first try to understand what is a capacitor. In simple words, capacitor is a device that stores electrical energy that can be used when desired. Well, you might say that a battery also does the same thing. Then how are the two different? So the answer is that capacitors can release energy at a much faster rate than batteries and that's what makes them unique. As an example, if you take a flash bulb, you will not be able to get a flash with a battery since a flash would require a quick burst of energy that can be provided by a capacitor only. So every capacitor has a certain capacity to store energy and this is termed as its capacitance. And before we go ahead, it might be worthwhile to draw a quick comparison of stored electrical energy with gravitational energy that you can store in an overhead tank if you keep carrying buckets of water and pouring into the tank. So what is happening here is that you are doing work in taking the water up to a higher gravitational potential resulting in generation of potential energy. And this potential energy can be used to maybe run a turbine and generate electricity when desired. Well, we wish to achieve something similar, but as electrical energy delivered by these devices called capacitors. So a capacitor can be made by taking two conductors of any shape and isolating them from each other. A common shape that is actually used is a parallel plate capacitor that has two parallel conducting plates of say area A and set distance D apart. Now what we do is we charge the plates of the capacitor and say build up a charge of plus Q on one plate and minus Q on the other. But make note that when we do various derivations later, we will say that charge on the capacitor is Q. That is the absolute value of charge placed on either plate. You may also take note of the fact that the net charge on the capacitor is zero, but since the two plates are isolated from each other, each plate carries a charge of plus Q and minus Q respectively. Now, what we can quickly see in this setup is that each plate is at a certain potential and therefore there is a potential difference between them and let us say it is V. Now, we clearly know that potential is proportional to the charge value and more the charge on each of these plates, more the potential and therefore more the potential difference between the plates. So we can say that V is proportional to Q or the other way around Q is proportional to V and if we drop this proportionality sign and put a constant, what we get is a C or the capacitance of the setup. So now we have an equation that connects charge Q, capacitance C and potential V as Q is equal to C V. So you can see that C is a ratio of Q to V, but then you got to be careful that C does not increase if Q goes up or V goes down. Remember C is a constant. So when you increase Q, V also increases so that the ratio Q upon V remains constant. Likewise, if you increase V, Q must increase and therefore this ratio remains constant at C. So you see that the value of capacitance depends only on the geometry of the plates. That is the area and the distance D and we will prove this later in the lesson. Well, you could also say that capacitance is the ability of a setup like this to carry charge for a certain potential difference V. Now you can see that the units of capacitance is coulombs per volt, 
but rarely do we use this unit. Instead, we use the unit of farad. So one coulomb per volt is equal to one farad. And later on, when we do some examples, what you'll find is one farad is a very large unit of capacitance. And in actual practice, we deal with micro and picofarads. Now, before we go ahead, let us have a quick look at how a capacitor can be charged. So if you take two conducting plates and connect them to the terminals of a common battery like this and flip the switch on, what will happen is that we set up an electric circuit. Now we know that a battery maintains a potential difference between the terminals with one at positive and the other at negative potential. So when we set up this circuit, we enable electrons to flow through the circuit due to the electric field the battery enables. In such a situation, electrons from plate A move towards the positive terminal of the battery, thereby leaving a positive charge on the plate and the same number of electrons leave the negative terminal of the battery and accumulate on plate B, giving it a negative charge. But then we can see that while the electrons have moved to plate B, they cannot jump over to plate A. So now what is happening here is that as time passes, plate A keeps losing electrons and becomes more and more positive. But then a time comes when the plate A is as positively charged as the positive terminal of the battery. And when this happens, no more electrons leave plate A because they experience the same pull from both sides, that is plate A and the positive terminal of the battery. Likewise, no more electrons are driven to plate B since the electrons that may wish to move towards plate B are repelled as much by plate B as is by the negative terminal. So in a way, you see the plates have reached the same potential as the battery terminals or in other words, built up the same potential difference as the battery has. And when this happens, we say the capacitor is fully charged and the capacitance of this capacitor is then related to charge and potential difference V by this equation. So now this brings us to the next obvious question and that is how do we measure capacitance C for various shapes? So let us start with the simplest form of capacitor that is two plates each with area A and separated by a very small distance D. When we charge this up to a value Q, we know an electric field E would get set up between the plates and this would be uniform in the region between the plates. We also know that for such an arrangement, the E value is given as sigma divided by epsilon naught, where sigma is the charge per unit area of the plate or Q by A. Then we can say that E is equal to Q by epsilon naught A. We also know that the potential difference between the plates that has evenly distributed electric field E should equal ED. And just to quickly remind ourselves why so, Remember, potential difference is nothing but the work done in moving a unit charge from point A to B. And here, if we move a unit charge from this plate to this plate, the work done is force F on the unit charge dot D. Now, you know that force on a charge is QE, but since Q is unit charge here, the force value is E. And since the displacement and force are parallel to each other and in the same direction, work done is ED. So if we substitute the value of E from here, what we get is V is equal to QD upon epsilon naught A. And if we use this derived value of V in this equation, what we get is this equals Q epsilon naught A by QD which equals epsilon naught A by D. So you can see that the capacitance is dependent on the area of the plate 
and the separation d between the plates and since epsilon is a constant what we conclude is that the capacitance of a capacitor is dependent on the geometry of the capacitor and has no relation to charge on plates or the potential difference between them so in this setup if you can move one of the plates up or down you can change the capacitance of the capacitor so if you move this plate closer the distance d reduces the capacitance goes up and if you increase d the capacitance goes down so let us now go on and derive the capacitance of a capacitor that is spherical in shape and what we have here are two spheres that are concentric with radius r a and r b the sphere inside has a charge plus q and the outer one has charge minus q if we go by the formula of capacitance it is charge q on either sphere divided by the potential difference between the two spheres so basically this question is about finding the potential difference v and we can then find the capacitance c as q by v well we know that the charge on the outer sphere has no contribution to the electric field inside it so we could say that the electric field at any point between the spheres is due to the inner sphere only and the same is true for electric potential at any point as well that is potential at any point in between the spheres is due to inner sphere only well we know that the formula for finding potential v at any point outside the sphere is simply equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon not q by r so we could say that the potential on the surface of the sphere va is 1 by 4 pi epsilon q by r a and that at the outer sphere is vb equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon not q by r b then the potential difference between the two spheres is nothing but va minus vb which is equal to q by 4 pi epsilon not 1 upon r a minus 1 upon r b and that equals q upon 4 pi epsilon not r b minus r a divided by r a into r b now since we know v a b or the potential difference between the spheres we can say that the capacitance is equal to q by v or c is equal to 4 pi epsilon not r a r b upon r b minus r a well if you examine this formula what you will see is that this is no different from that of a parallel plate capacitor it may not look apparent to you but let me show you how it is so let us rewrite this expression as epsilon not 4 pi r a r b by r b minus r a then 4 pi r a r b is nothing but area of a sphere that is in between spheres of radius r a and r b in fact it is a geometric mean of the area of the two spheres let us call this area a we can also see that r b minus r a is nothing but the distance between the two spheres then we could write the capacitance of the sphere as c is equal to epsilon not a by d and what you'll observe is that this is the same as that of a parallel plate capacitor where we derived a similar expression so the conclusion is that if you have a spherical capacitor with the distance between the spheres a lot smaller than the radii it is equivalent of a parallel plate capacitor with the same plate area and separation d so let us take yet another capacitor design where we have two long coaxial cylinders the inner one has radius r a and the outer one has r b let us assume the linear charge density on each as lambda and of course with opposite charges so 
once again we use a formula c is equal to q by v where v is the potential difference between the two cylinders we can see that the absolute value of charge on each cylinder is lambda times l and that then is your q value so once again the problem comes down to finding the potential difference v between the two cylinders and quite like our earlier example of spheres we know here also the outer cylinder has no influence on the electric field and potential inside so the potential at any point between the two cylinders is determined by the inner cylinder only and we know that potential at any point outside a cylinder is given by the equation v is equal to lambda by 2 pi epsilon naught ln of r naught upon r where we take r naught as a reference radius at which we assume v as zero so let us take r naught here as r b or the inner radius of the outer cylinder then we can say that v at any point is v is equal to lambda by 2 pi epsilon naught ln of r b upon r which obviously gives potential at surface of the outer cylinder as zero when we put r is equal to r b and potential at r a is equal to lambda by 2 pi epsilon naught ln r b upon r a hence the potential difference v a b or simply put as v is equal to lambda upon 2 pi epsilon naught ln of r b upon r a here lambda is positive and the inner cylinder is at a higher potential than the outer cylinder then the capacitance can be calculated as c is equal to q by v a b which equals lambda l divided by lambda by 2 pi epsilon naught ln of r b upon r a which then equals 2 pi epsilon naught capital l divided by ln of r b upon r a